Hi everyone, I'm Angela of Axon Root Homestead and today I'm here to talk to you about the very basics of keeping sheep. We have Hampshire sheep here on the farm. Um, they are a multi-purpose breed. What they do for us is they're going to offer us wool. If we weren't a veg vegetarian homestead, they would offer us meat, but we are vegetarians. And, but what we also use them for is clearing brush. Now, sheep will not eat the woody stem portion of the plant, the same as a goat would, but what they will eat is all of the foliage and vegetation. So if you were to take barberry or a raspberry, they would eat the leaves off of it. A goat, in turn, would also eat the stem. So they do excellent brush clearing for us when it comes to vegetation, and in addition, we'll be using them for their wool. Let's take a look at what we need to do in order to keep these guys safe and healthy. This is our old 1775 barn, which we have converted half of into the stall for the sheep. So you'll see they have a feeder, some salt blocks. This is their hanging um, sweet feed feeder. They also have plenty of space. They have their minerals, which is right here, as well as water. Now the other half we use for storage. We only have the three sheep, so this is plenty of space for them to escape the elements. Sheep do need bedding, but you don't need to go out and purchase anything excessive. Wood shavings are not recommended because it gets stuck in the fleece, nor wood pellets or anything like that. What they actually prefer to do is just to pull down the hay from their hay feeder and any of the discarded or fallen hay becomes their bed. And so they will often be found laying here. You can also purchase straw, but anything smaller than a straw or a piece of hay is at risk of getting stuck within the fleece, working its way down and irritating the skin. Now, one of the approaches to keeping sheep is the deep litter method, where you just kind of let everything pile up and keep adding layers. We don't do that here at Axenbird Homestead. Instead, I prefer to go through daily and take it down to the soil floor that we have here in the barn. It's just uh, my personal preference for keeping flies away and keeping the barn stall clean. I personally clean out all the muck and matter every single day. We do have an attached outdoor run, which is adjacent to our duck and goose coop, so they can all see each other. And this is just a space where they can also come in and out. So if they're impatient for me in the morning, they can come out here. Sheep are vegetarians, and so they do ideally need to be on pasture. Hay can also be offered if a pasture is not available. But what these guys do is they're happy and content just to walk around. They are ruminant animals. So they do have the rumen and the multiple stomachs and they do chew their cud. But um, greenery is the main component of their diet, not sweet feed. We use sweet feed in order to get them back into their, um, their barn at night. And so they are only offered a minimal amount once a day. As I mentioned earlier, we get a small amount of feed in order to get them back into the barn stable by night. This is an all-purpose animal sweet feed. Now, I have weathers, and so I would not recommend giving them any sort of alfalfa cube or pellet because it can contribute to calculi or urinary blockage inside of the sheep. Now, the two things I offer my sheep free choice every day in addition to pasture is their hay and also their mineral. Now, when it comes to sheep, we would not want to use any sort of a mineral formulated for just a general purpose barnyard animal. We would want to use something specially formulated for sheep. The reason is that sheep have a, a tolerance when it comes to copper. Sheep can and will tolerate very tiny amounts of copper, but anything more than a very small percentage in their diet actually is detrimental to their health. So what I do is find a mineral that is perfectly and uniquely formulated for sheep, and I don't have to worry about um, uh, copper toxicity with my animals. So I have gelded ram lambs. They are not quite full grown. We have another few months left. Um, they are gelded male sheep, and that is called a weather. Weathers tend to be very docile. However, you do have to watch out for them ramming each other. They are rams. Now an intact ram that isn't gelded is notorious for being much more aggressive. Um, ram lambs will occasionally headbutt and even try to do that to myself or my kids and obviously that's very dangerous. So we're not going to talk about curbing that or training here in today's video, but that is a safety thing to watch out for. 
Other than that, Rams, um, gelded Rams weathers are very, very sweet and they have excellent dispositions for the most part. Um, the other most docile type of sheep you can get is a female, which is a ewe. However, when she does come into heat, you do need to make sure to watch out for any temperamental changes. In addition to keeping an eye out on um, your copper intake, the percentage for your sheep, and making sure you don't give weathers any more than 10% of alfalfa in their diet to avoid urinary calculi. Um, the other things you wanna watch out for are parasites. There's something called the FOMACHA scale, and you can order a card, and what you do is you check the membrane of the eye, and based on the different ranges of color from red being healthy to white to being very, very anemic, you can take a look at whether or not your animals need to be dewormed. Parasites is something that sheep are very prone to. I mean, they do eat off the ground, which is where their waste is shed. So you do wanna pay attention and have dewormers ready when you bring sheep to the farm. And then as a new sheep owner, the other thing that you want to be um, cognizant of is fly strike. Now fly strike is where fly bites um, and maggots actually work their way down beneath the fleece onto the skin. It's noticeable by a wet appearance, a green yellow area on the fleece, usually accompanied by a bad odor. Now this is very, very painful and not good for the sheep at all. So that is something that needs to be researched and checked into right away. All right, thank you very much for visiting our farm and owl and ox and bear and I are two Hampshire sheep and are part Hampshire, part Katahdin. Thank you very much for coming to Axon Root Homestead. Have a great day. Hi guys, I'm Kirsten from Hostel Valley Living and I'm very excited to be here with Angela today to talk to you guys about the differences between goats and sheep. Here at our farm we have 19 goats and they're one of my favorite animals so I'm really happy to be talking to you guys about their needs and um, what makes goats so special. In terms of shelter and space requirements for goats, goats can be kept in a relatively small space, um, but they do need a shelter that allows them that allows them to get out of the elements, um, out of snow and rain, but also away from the wind. And it should be well bedded down with clean bedding, shavings or straw or hay, um, especially during the winter months. This can be just a lean-to structure that they can come and go from as they please, or it can be a space that you close up at night. Our goats have a 12 by 12 stall in our barn, which is a little too small for the number of goats we have, but it is open so they can come and go as they wish. <laughs> you may have heard that goats are great escape artists. Um, we use a five foot tall, no climb fence with cedar posts for our permanent pasture and we have no issues with escapes there. That fence works fantastically. When we rotate our goats around, as we are doing now, we use 42 inch tall electric fencing with a 1.2 joule solar charger. And that also works really well. We don't have issues with escapes um, in our movable fencing either. You also may have heard that goats stink. <laughs> and that's not strictly true. Only intact male goats smell. And it's because of behavior that they engage in urinating on themselves and generally making a mess, um, which they do to impress the females. So if you have only females or neutered males, you will have absolutely no issues with odor as long as you keep your stalls clean. Goats primarily live on forage or hay. Um, so our goats rotate around and they eat all sorts of interesting things. So goats are not grazers. They do eat grass, but it's not their primary diet. What they really like are brambles, uh, branches, dead leaves. They'll eat poison ivy. They'll eat rose bushes and other thorny uh, climbing vines, which makes them really good for controlling overgrowth in, uh, in your area. Um, Goats do still need some hay in their diet just to keep a balanced system. So even when they've out, been out foraging all day, I still provide some hay when they come in in the evening. And if I have a nursing or um, a pregnant doe, I will offer her some grain as well, some dairy goat grain. 
Uh, we don't offer our males grain because they are really prone to urinary issues and those can be fatal. So unless you're advised something specific by a vet, uh, I don't recommend offering particularly neutered males grain. The primary reason that most people keep goats is for dairy. Our herd is Nigerian dwarf goats and they are the smallest breed of goat. The handy thing about that is that they are really easy to manage, particularly if you're alone, you can sort of pick them up and throw them over the fence if you need to. <laughs> In theory, the downside of Nigerian dwarf goats is that they produce less milk. A single doe produces about two quarts a day, but that's plenty of milk for us and our dairy needs. And if you need more milk, you can consider larger breeds of goats or more goats. <laughs> the milk of Nigerian dwarf goats is about 10% butter fat, which is some of the highest butter fat content in the dairy world. And that makes their milk really desirable and it makes particularly delicious cheeses, sweets, caramels. I use it a lot for ice cream and it also makes wonderful goat's milk soap. Other purposes for goats, uh, our land management, like I mentioned, they are really good at keeping brush and overgrowth under control. They can help take down vines that might be uh, invasively sort of pulling at your, uh, your larger trees or just trying to take over your fields. And they're super sure-footed so they can work in areas that you might not be able to get machinery into um, or even that other animals can't get to. They won't mow your lawn though. Um, grass is not their primary diet. It's not super great for them to eat that as their only source of forage and they may not be that effective at that anyways. Goats do require some annual vaccinations that you should consult your vet about and uh, warming. Some people warm annually or seasonally and some do it only when there are, there are signs of parasites. Um, again, I would consult your vet about that, but they definitely need every eight weeks or so their hooves to be trimmed, which is a fairly simple process that you can do at home yourself. And otherwise, they are relatively easy keepers. They need access to loose mineral, including copper, which I offer mine free choice and they regulate their intake. I also offer a mineral block just in case they aren't getting enough from the loose mineral. And you can offer baking soda as well, which helps combat bloat and ease their digestion. So as long as you're providing the right food and mineral for your goats, they are pretty self-sufficient creatures um, and they are an amazing joy. Goats are remarkably curious. They have really distinct personalities. They also form family units. So we have goats with kids and grandkids and they all hang out together and definitely throughout their entire lives know who their daughters are and their granddaughters and so on. So they have really sweet and kind of complicated, uh, endearing family and herd dynamics. Um, so goats are entertaining to watch, uh, a lot of fun, and really I highly recommend keeping goats. It uh, has brought me so much joy.